Ahoy! I'm U.S. Navy Captain Michael Sayre, surface warfare officer and Navy cryptologist, now retired and living in New Mexico. I'm on travel at the moment. This is the only way I could be telepresent for Keith Abernethy's retirement luncheon, and I appreciate the help I received from Eileen Schilling to make this possible. Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, I would like to take this opportunity to say a few words on this, uh, on this occasion. I've known Keith for 20 years. Back in 1996, I parachuted into C Group in Fanex as the first Navy Captain Cryptologist to explore the undiscovered country in IAD. I found myself surrounded by mathematicians and encryption wizards in something that, to me, resembled the land of Oz. Bob Scalzi and Angie Galicchio didn't know what to make of this cryptologic warfighter. And to be candid, I began to question my decision to be assigned to the defense side of the agency. Then one day, I got a call from Navy retired Captain Dave Patterson on behalf of Tom McDermott, who said something about a red team and that I was supposed to find this guy named Keith Abernathy and get with him immediately. Well, I reported his order. Keith and I shook hands, and I found a kindred spirit in taking applied cryptology to the battlefield. In this case, it was an unprecedented version of the Joint Chiefs of Staff no-notice exercise known as Eligible Receiver, or ER for short and in our case, ER-97. Keith clued me in on the Red Team objectives. Simulating foreign adversaries, the Red Team was to attack the United States of America information infrastructure and also the DOD information systems. Holy <laughs> I said to myself. Remember the TV series, The A-Team? If you do, uh, picture Keith Abernathy as George Papard, the real leader of the team, the guy who made things happen. My role was more like Dirk Benedict, who was nicknamed Face. He represented the team outwardly. Keith ran all aspects of the Red Team, both the live internet attacks against DOD and the scripted attacks against critical infrastructures while I interfaced the red team outwardly doing battle, uh, well, I mean coordination, with the legal and policy folks who largely had the attitude of, you can't be serious, it's not legal, it can't be done. It took a lot of convincing, but when you have Rich Marshall and Tom McDermott and JCS Lieutenant General John Campbell and General Minahan on your side, you have a fighting chance. That's a chance, not a pushover. The proof had to be in the pudding. The results are history, and that doesn't need to be repeated here, but can be summed up in just four words. The Red Team won, period. And we won with our hands tied behind our backs, rigidly complying with legal restrictions that no real hacker would honor, using the simplest of common internet tools and doing our job one ping at a time using dial-up connections. And of course, there are Red Team Sea Stories too, that even Fred Kaplan doesn't know about. In the Navy, Sea Stories are similar to fairy tales, but where fairy tales begin with Once Upon a Time, Sea Stories start with, now this is no sh <laughs> Members of the team included two characters who might very well uh, be present watching this. I'll refer to them as Mikey and Polly. Here they are in their wayward youth. Polly is the one on the left. I remember that distant, vacant expression after Paul worked 36 hours straight to the point where the distinction between DOD and DOE was only one letter apart. <laughs> and speaking of DOE, Mikey is the one on the right. The long hair went by the wayside when he cleaned up his act and changed his image, but never his heart. In between hairstyles, Mikey gave me some sound advice about computer operating systems during ER-97. Aye, sir. The more they overthink the plumbing, 
the easier it is to stop up the drain. Seriously now, uh, because I was the outward face of the red team, I got a lot of credit for red team success. I'm here now to tell you that much of that credit was displaced and should have been heaped upon Keith Abernethy rather than me. He ran it, I chased after him. Keith had the vision, passion, drive, enthusiasm, fortitude, and leadership to pull off what is now being referred to as the Cyber Awakening by senior DOD and U.S. government officials and those folks at the Cryptologic Museum. It was an honor and a privilege to work alongside Keith Abernathy and the Red Team on Eligible Receiver 97. We were and continue to be blood brothers in cryptologic support to battlefield commanders. Now some of you know I earned the Navy call sign Spock after another cryptologic success I had earlier in my career. So in closing, it is appropriate that this video clip reflect my relationship with Keith Abernathy, who is shown on the left with the pointy sideburns, and a retired Navy captain namesake who's on the right. Let's watch. I have been and always shall be your friend. Congratulations on your retirement, Keith. This is Spock here in New Mexico, out. <laughs>